Hi, first graders. Welcome back to another day of making meaning. I am Ms. Prescott, one of the first grade teachers at South Shore Pre-K-8 in Rainier Beach. Just like your teachers, I have been missing my students a lot and wishing we could be together. One thing that I've really been missing are our morning assemblies. That was a time we'd come together as a first and second grade because we were all in the same pod and we would um, have silence and learn things together and sing and just get ready to start our day on the right foot. Really am missing that and hoping we can all be back together soon. I know that your teachers are thinking about all the things they used to do with you and missing you as well. In the meantime though, we can do some learning together. And so this week we're going to be doing three making meaning lessons. So we're gonna read a new book and um, discuss it and do some activities with it. All right, let's go ahead and get started with it. So this week, or sorry, this whole year, you have been learning all about what it means to be a good reader. And so as we've been reading different books and making meaning, we've been taking note of what those things are and keeping track of them on a chart. So our chart is right here. And these are the different things we've learned about this year. So our chart says what good readers do. And good readers make connections to their lives. That means that when they're reading a book, they think about how does that connect to their life? Have they ever experienced that before? And good readers make connections between stories. So they think about what they're reading and think about, oh, I maybe read that in another book. And they connect the things that they've learned in different books to each other. Um, we've learned about retelling stories in our own words. So thinking back about what happened in the beginning, the middle and the end, and retelling in order what we just read or heard. We've also worked on visualizing. And visualizing is when we make a picture in our minds. And we've worked on wondering what we are reading. So we've asked questions as we have been reading, before reading, during reading, and after reading to help us really think about what it is that we're learning about and, um, and figure out maybe that we want to read more about a certain topic, topic because we have a lot of questions about it. Something else we've learned that good readers do and that we've been practicing is making connections to information we already know. So thinking about a topic before we even sit down and read the book and think, okay, what do I actually already know about this? And then we added this last week, use text features in nonfiction books. So we use text features like diagrams and glossaries, table of contents to learn things and to help us understand these nonfiction books that we are reading better. So last week we did that by looking at the diagram in A Day in the Life of a Garbage Collector. We looked at a diagram of a garbage truck and all of the tools that a garbage collector needs and we learned more about a garbage collector from looking at that text feature. All right, so we are going to continue um, to practice these different things as we are reading and working on our book this week. Okay, so in today's lesson, we are gonna read another nonfiction book. And we've been reading a lot of those recently. And we are going to discuss what we already know about the topic of this book. We're going to um, talk about what we learn from this book. And we're also going to get a chance to visualize our favorite part of this book. So you are going to be needing to participate and talking out loud. So that might look like you turning and talking to someone at home. Remember, you can speak in whatever language you want to. You also um, can turn and talk to me on the screen because after I ask you a question, I'll usually go like this. Or you can grab a stuffed animal, like I've got my friend Koala Bear here, and you can turn and talk to them about your smart thinking. All right, so today's book is about elephants. And remember, one good thing that readers do when they're reading nonfiction is they think about what they already know about a topic. So what do you think you know about elephants? Great, so maybe you said that you know that they've got trunks or that they're gray or that they live in herds or there's different kinds. Let's see what we learned today. So 
the book that we are going to read is called An Elephant Grows Up, and it is by Anastasia Swin, illustrated by Michael L. Denman and William J. Hewitt. So this is a book about a baby elephant growing up on the continent of Africa. And sometimes books have maps to help readers. And this map right here shows readers where in the world this book takes place. So he said that this is gonna be about a baby elephant on the continent of Africa. And here's the continent of Africa. And we live here in North America, right around here. So, map, now we're seeing another text feature here, this map, and we are gonna add that to our list. Remember, we've been keeping a list of text features that we are finding as we are reading nonfiction books. So I'm gonna add map to our list of text features. So remember, a map can help us to know where in the world the book is taking place. So we're gonna add that new text feature. So today we're just gonna read the first part of the book, An Elephant Grows Up. And I'm gonna stop while we're reading so that you can visualize what you have heard and talk about what you learn about elephants. Let's get started. Welcome to the world of wild animals. Follow a baby elephant and her brother as they grow up under the hot African sun. As they become adults, they separate and have their own families. Under the hot African sun, a baby elephant is born. The calf, a calf is a baby elephant, the calf looks small next to her mother, but she weighs more than a refrigerator. A female, that means a woman, a female is called a cow. A male, that's a man, a male is called a bull. Less than an hour after birth, the elephant calf can stand. She is already taller than your kitchen table. So I want you to close your eyes right now and you're gonna visualize. Visualize that newborn baby elephant that is taller than your kitchen table. So you're making a picture in your mind of that baby elephant that is taller than your kitchen table. So what do you visualize when you imagine that small baby elephant as large as your kitchen table? That's pretty big for a newborn baby, right? Let's keep reading. The calf is hungry, so she nuzzles. That means she gently puts her face up or head against something. So she nuzzles up to her mother to drink milk. Calves are covered in hair when they are born. Older elephants only have long hair at the ends of their tails. Mothers and their young stay together in one herd. That's a large group of animals. Young adult males and older males roam. Roam means to wander. They roam by themselves or join small herds of other males. The herd stays in one place for several days after the calf is born. Once the new calf can walk, the herd will move on. What have you learned about elephants so far? So maybe you've learned that they live together in herds or large groups and that the baby elephants are the only ones to have long hair on their bodies. When they get older, that long hair is only found at the end of their tail. Maybe you found out that baby elephants are pretty big when they're first born, right? Right. 
Elephants often walk in single file lines along the trails. The calves walk behind or next to their mothers. Looking for food is a full-time job for elephants. They spend about 16 hours a day eating. They only sleep a few hours a day. The oldest cow in the herd leads the other elephants. She traveled these same trails when she was a calf. The long trail leads the elephants to a popular gathering place, the water hole. They visit the, watering, the water hole at least once a day. So what did you learn about elephants from the part that I just read? Maybe you learned that the elephants visit a watering hole each day and they go there at least once a day. At first, the calf uses her mouth to drink the water. As she grows older, the calf learns how to use her trunk. The trunk is the long nose. She sucks water into her trunk and then blows it into her mouth. An elephant's trunk is the elephant's nose and upper lip. Some young elephants suck their trunks just like babies suck their thumbs. The calf grows up fast. She begins to eat plants like the older elephants. She also uses her trunk to grab leaves high in the trees. Mother's nurse, nurse means to feed milk, Mothers nurse their calves for about two years. Only after the mother stops nursing will she have another baby. The calf uses her tusks. Tusks are the very long teeth that stick out um, from an animal's mouth, like right there. So the calf uses her tusks to dig for water. Some elephants use their right tusk more. Other elephants prefer their left tusk. It's just like being right-handed or left-handed. All right, that's where we're gonna stop for today. So what did you learn about elephants that surprised you? So maybe you were surprised that sometimes they use their tusks their right tusk more than their left tusk, just like we are right-handed and left-handed. That was pretty cool. That surprised me. What part of the story did you visualize? And what did you picture in your mind? So what other parts of this story did you visualize? I visualized all of the elephants at the watering hole and what that would look like to come down there and to drink water and what it looked like to have the calf learning how to drink the water through his trunk because that's something that he has to learn. I could just imagine him trying to suck up some of that water maybe coughing on it a little bit getting maybe a little choked up by it. All right, well, it was really fun to read the first part of this book. In our um, lesson, our next lesson, we will get to read the rest of it and continue to discuss it. So now it is time for IDR. So this is the time where you are going to get your Just Write books for yourself and find a comfortable spot to sit down and start reading. And remember, we wanna be reading for at least 15 to 20 minutes each day. When you are done with IDR, you have a page in your district learning packet that you can complete that looks like this. And it says, first grade, what do good readers do Monday? Remember we talked about what good readers do at the beginning of this lesson. And it says, the directions are to answer one of the following questions. So you're gonna choose a book to read during IDR and then answer one of these questions about it once you are done reading. 
And the questions that you can choose from are, what did you visualize or picture in your mind as you were reading? What did you wonder as you were reading? What did you learn? What information in your book reminded you of your own life? What is the book? What in the book reminded you of information you already knew? And what other books did this book remind you of? So remember, you don't necessarily have to have this piece of paper. You could just grab another sheet of paper and write your thinking on there. But you want to pick a book during IDR, read it, and then answer one of these questions about it and thinking about how you're using those different things that good readers do. All right, it was fun learning about elephants with you all today. I will see you next time. Bye.